Hello and welcome to the very first edition of The Rundown, where we discuss what's happening here at home and abroad. I'm your host, Matthew Stell, and I'm so glad that you've taken the opportunity to join us on today. A numerous amount of events have occurred over the past week, so let's get started. First off, last Saturday, my grandfather celebrated his 70th birthday. Those digits sure do look good on you, Pops. But also, the nation celebrated Constitution Day, as it firmly has for the past 12 years, on September 17th. But the history of this not so well known holiday dates back further than just 2004. Constitution Day was originally celebrated beginning in 1939 as I Am an American Day, an idea coined by newspaper baron William Randolph Hearst to recognize newly naturalized American citizens. Now remember this was pre-World War II, but the Nazi occupation of Europe was underway and a massive influx of Jewish refugees migrating to the United States was at an all-time high. Later on in 1952, President Harry Truman signed into law the establishment of Citizenship Day on September 17th to commemorate the date the U.S. Constitution was signed by the delegates to the Constitutional Convention way back in 1787. For 200 years and 229 years, this document has been our country's abiding set of laws and has set principles for our institutions of government as well. As my grandfather would say, forever imitated, but never duplicated. Many Americans, that being myself included, remain grateful for the rights and freedoms provided to us by our Constitution, especially those freedoms outlined within the First Amendment. But recently, one individual in particular has begun to use his First Amendment rights to speak out against the current oppression and inequality of minorities here in America. San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick has decided that he, along with others, will sit and or take a knee during the playing of our national anthem at NFL games. Here's what Colin had to say when asked about his reasoning. I mean, ultimately, it's to bring awareness and make people, you know, realize what's really going on in this country. There are a lot of things that are going on that are unjust, people aren't being held accountable for, and that's something that needs to change. That's something that, you know, this country stands for freedom, liberty, justice for all. And it's not happening for all right now. Kaepernick also believes that the anthem is inherently racist due to the content of the anthem's third verse that proclaims death to slaves who fall alongside the British in the War of 1812. But Collins' intent to take a stand by taking a seat is conditional, though. In a later interview, he states that he would again stand, but only once he began to see true change. As many of you know, Colin Kaepernick's actions have sparked a national debate for a while now. There are those who believe he retains a valid point and has every right to protest by taking a knee during our national anthem. And even President Obama surely believes that as well. He's exercising his constitutional right to make a statement. I think there's a long history of sports figures doing so. Other players throughout the league have also began to take a knee or raise a fist in instead over a hand over a heart to show their solidarity with Kaepernick. But as expected, there are those who strongly believe that what Kaepernick has done is just inappropriate and simply out of order, in which ESPN analyst Trent Dilfer illustrates. Football is the ultimate team game, and you want to be a championship teammate. You, want to be, you fully want to be bought, bought into having your team have the best chance of success, then you put your team above yourself. And no matter how passionate you are, no matter how much of a burden you have for a social issue, you don't let it get in the way of the team. While many do echo Dilfer's belief in that the game of football should not be used as a social pulpit, but as a game that ultimately unifies us as Americans, there are those who go beyond to say Kaepernick's actions are disrespectful to not only the nation, but to those who are willing to protect it at any means necessary. Interesting enough, many veterans, active and retired, have decided to support Kaepernick and that they believe he has every right to do so. A right that they diligently, diligently protect day in and day out. Former Minnesota governor and veteran Jesse Ventura did not hold back his comments by saying, quote, that's why I served my country, so that you could have the freedom to protest. I salute Colin Kaepernick. I fully support him, fully and completely. As you can see, emotions are high and nearly everyone has an opinion that they would like to share, which is also their constitutional right. So we decided to go out and ask our fellow Cougs here at UH truly what they think of this issue. 
Hi, I'm Adalia Rodriguez, and today we're at the Student Center and wanting to check out what students think about the recent Colin Kaepernick controversy. Let's go check it out. What do you think about Colin Kaepernick not standing for the national anthem? I think that I would uh, fight and risk my life for his right to do that. I mean, I feel if that's his opinion, he should be free to express it in any way that he feels is right. Um, so, I mean, I, do you support him in that opinion? I uh, don't support him. I don't really agree with it, but it's just if that's the way he expresses his, his thoughts and, and feelings, and I mean, that's fine. Well, I think Colin Kaepernick uh, has the right, as any Americans, to, to the freedom of speech, and he's just voicing his opinion. As we look and see uh, people that are running for president, they can say anything they want to say, and they have no repercussions. Now, why is it such a big thing about Colin Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick not, not uh, putting his hand on his heart or kneeling be, uh, before the flag? I, I think that, that it's bringing, he's, he's using what he, he knows best. This is his way of bringing notice to the racist uh, behavior of some p policemen in America, as we see in Oklahoma. Here, here's a man that's that's walking. His car stalled in the middle of the highway, and he's looked at it some bad dude, and all he got is car trouble. Got hands in the air, and he's gunned down. So I think it's necessary for people to really bring notice. You know, if they have to, if they have to put a knee down because of not honoring the flag, because Really, the democracy is not being honored in America according to some races of people, whether they're Muslims, whether they're gay, whether they're lesbians, or whether they're, they're, they're Mexicans. I mean, so I think a whole lot of people should kneel down uh, and not recognize the flag because democracy really is, seems to be only pertinent when it comes to certain people. Well, I don't agree with his idea that America is a racist uh, place and country. However, I do respect his freedom to sit down, knee, or whatever he does in the national anthem. Uh, if he wants to protest and is peaceful, he has every right to do that. Uh, however, I don't agree with his message. Honestly, I'm kind of indifferent because um, he has his point of view, and then the people who are like actually officials and you know serve the country have their point of view. Um, I don't see it as huge as a deal. I mean, he, it's not uh, an actual obligation that you have to do, but he's a grown man. He can make his own decisions. Mm, I mean, to be honest, if that's what he feels, you know, strongly about, then I think he's free to do whatever he wants. I don't really have anything against it. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. It's. I think he's doing the right thing by standing, by standing, like you know, by sitting down, expressing his, uh, you know, his rights and all that stuff. So I think he's doing a good job, and I support him. Kaepernick not standing during the national anthem did bring some media attention because it was seen as disrespectful, um, which in my personal opinion it is. I've been taught ever since a very young age to always stand and put your hand over your heart during the pledge and the national anthem. However, I did not see it being scrutinized as much as it was an African or colored female such as Gabby Douglas during the Olympics, which is still making headlines today. Well, I feel uh, Kaepernick has a right to express what he feels. Um, Obviously, it's kind of, it's disrespectful to be part of a citizen of this country and uh, not not stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. But uh, you know, he's right to do what he wants. Everyone has a right to do what they want. So, would you say you support him? Uh, in a way. In a way. In a way, I don't fully support him. Uh -huh. Like I said, everyone has their mm -hmm. as a. Well, <laughs> I mean, it was it's his right. I mean, there are people who like didn't stand during the pledge. And nobody like caused a whole bunch of controversy because of that, but I think everyone's making a big deal about it because he makes like 19 million dollars a year. <laughs> Do you support him in his decision? I mean, I support his reason behind it, but like, could it be? Could it be? Could it have been addressed in a different way? I totally agree. I mean, I totally think that's possible, but it's freedom of speech. Like, it's our constitutional right to be able to express how we feel the way we feel. 
Um, I disagree with his actions because um, I've had a personal experience with soldiers and seeing them and really getting to interact with them. And I feel like that's just disrespectful towards um, soldiers because it's basically disregarding their sacrifice for this country, the lives that they've given up so that he can have the opportunity to play the game that he's playing. Um, I think that regardless, you know, where you come from, that you should always respect your uh, patriotism and your nationality, like where you're from. Because even though, like, yes, you know, I am an American, I was born and raised here, was well, say Texas, and I'm a Hispanic. You know, regardless of whatever happened, you should respect your your country. So no matter what we're going through, because with every country, they're going to have its, its events, um, like oppression times, successful times. So it's up to you. Um, how you want to go about that route. But I feel with him that like, he should not disrespect it because yes, even though from the original meaning of the, uh, the uh, national anthem, it may have been um, not meaningful as what we say now because like, time does change. But I feel regardless of what you're going through, you should always respect your flag, respect your, your, your patriotism. So with the recent Colin Kaepernick controversy, it's actually influencing a lot of high school students not to stand at their high school football games. How do you feel about that? Um, personally, I, I feel like it's okay because just because you're not standing up for the pledge doesn't mean that you're not patriotic just because you're not standing up for it, you know? Mm -hmm. like, I feel like it should be an option. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I feel the same way actually because, um, you know, if they feel like he's a role model and he's following the right, you know, he has the right mindset, then I think they have, they're free to do whatever they want to. So. Well, they're, they're football players. They've never been out there giving their lives, literal lives, to, to even be in the position to kneel during a football game. They need to know and understand the significance and the magnitude of being a soldier before they get to stand the knee. So I don't know if they really truly understand the whole concept of saying the pledge and things like that. The fact that it's reaching that young of a generation just means that the impact that everything that's going on in society that's happening, whether it's the violence, it's the racism, the discrimination, all of that, it's impacting everyone and not many people realize it. I mean, why can politicians or people running for office go up there and say whatever they want and not be scrutinized for it? We're living in a country where every religion, your skin color, the way you dress, how you look, everything is being scrutinized. So. I mean, the fact that it's reaching high schoolers is actually really sad because that just goes to show that it's going to affect their view on our country and honestly, it's going to affect how they view their society. Um, I really think this is one of those things where because someone famous is doing it, everyone else wants to do it, it's more of a trend than anything else. Um, like I said, Colin, he said that he's taking a knee because he believes America is racist. However, I always say, you know, show me one real racist thing that we could point out and say 100% that's racist and then I would agree with him so it's really more of oh it's a trend because one person is doing it. What do you think about the people burning his jersey out of just pure anger that he didn't stand up for the national anthem? Well what I think about that is that's just devastating you know anytime there's something like that that happens that's dramatic and uh, affecting someone's religion or culture or something then that's frowned upon. I think that's wrong. I mean, he's exercising his right. I mean, that's, I mean, he shouldn't be criticized just for just because exercising a right. I wouldn't burn it, but I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't wear it either. You wouldn't I mean, wear it. All right. So a lot of people are actually supporting Kaepernick by buying his jersey. If I gave you a jersey right now, would you wear it around campus? Sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> if I gave you a Kaepernick jersey right now, would you wear it? Of course I would. Oh yeah. Now, like I said before, we all have our own opinions and share perspectives, but just our right to proudly own those is what makes America great like no other. Remember, always imitate it, but never duplicate it. Over the weekend in New York and New Jersey, nearly 30 individuals were injured due to explosions caused by multiple homemade bombs crafted by 28-year-old Ahmad Khan Rahami who was apprehended and detained after a shootout with police on Monday in his hometown of Linden, New Jersey. Rahami is accused of placing bombs throughout cities between the two states, with the majority of victims injured from a blast that occurred in the Chelsea neighborhood of New York City, in which Mayor Bill de Blasio said, quote, we have every reason to believe this was an act of terror. Authorities say Rahami is directly linked to the bombings, but the full understanding of why he planted explosive devices is currently still under investigation. 
along with if Rahami acted alone or if there were others involved. The FBI began a brief investigation of Rahami in 2014 after he made frequent trips to Pakistan. But according to officials, there seemed to be no ties to any radical Islamic terrorist organizations at that time. Rahami has since been charged with five counts of attempted murder of a law enforcement officer along with a number of other charges. Our thoughts and prayers are with the injured and our hopes for a speedy recovery. Many are believing that love isn't always in the air after all. Once it was made public, that celebrity couple Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are unfortunately splitting up. On Tuesday, Jolie announced that she was filing from div for divorce from her husband of two years and partner for 11 years due to irreconcilable differences. The couple, who together are worth nearly half a billion dollars, are also parents of six children and are widely known for their philanthropy and social advocacy around the world. R.I.P. Brangelina. But don't give up, there's still hope for some of you out there. It's never too late and we've still got about five months until Valentine's Day. But of course, how could I do this show without talking about my first love and her name is politics? Campaign season is in the final stretch with less than seven weeks away until election day. The candidates for president never seemed to take a break, but when Secretary Clinton did so due to her being diagnosed with pneumonia, her opponents believed she was not ready to become commander in chief and still hold those stances, even after she got well. Now, if I had pneumonia, I wouldn't dare to leave my bed. But hey, I'm not running for president. Secretary Clinton continues to demand Mr. Trump release his tax returns before the election, while Mr. Trump demands a full disclosure of Clinton's medical records. In a recent NBC News poll, Clinton surprisingly leads Trump amongst registered voters by six points and amongst likely voters by four points. But what we have all been waiting for is finally here. The first presidential debate, which will be held Monday, September 26 at Hofstra University in New York. The debate will be moderated by NBC's Lester Holt and it will include three main topics, America's direction, achieving prosperity, and securing America. Next week here at The Rundown, we will analyze the aspects of the debate and especially the tons of content that we will have to try to cover in a short period of time. But before I go, I would like to leave you with the following quote from our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. America will never be destroyed from the outside if we falter and lose our freedoms. It will be because we destroyed ourselves. Terrence Crutcher was a father, a son, a brother, but he was also an American who should have been given the right to a fair trial if he was accused of a crime. But Mr. Crutcher wasn't given that opportunity. He was shot and killed by a Tulsa police officer after following her instructions. He was also unarmed and his murder has now been seen by millions. But the true question is, if all citizens are treated equally in the eyes of the law, or does the Constitution truly protect all of its citizens? The protesters in Charlotte want an answer to these questions. The children of Terrence Crutcher demand an answer to these questions. And we as America deserve to provide them with those answers. And if we fail to do so, we potentially add to our self-inflicted destruction. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us on social media by Facebook or Twitter because we want to hear your feedback. So for all of us here at Coog TV, I'm Matthew Still, and we hope to see you soon.